Hi, I'm Marty Duda, and today I talk to Steve Berlin, longtime sax player for Los Lobos. The band has just released their new album, Native Sons, which they describe as a love letter to Los Angeles. Here's Steve to tell us why. There are concrete rivers flowing. The album is kind of a love letter to LA is what I've read in the press and uh, uh, mostly covers. There's like one original, but the covers are pretty cool. And one original, yeah. You not the it. most uh, well, some are well known, some are not. So can you give me just like a brief overview of how this album came together and why it's here? Sure. Um, well, it, we, um, the, the story starts in uh, 2019. We, we had not had a record deal since uh, 2004. 15 i think or 16 right but it wasn't like we were looking for one we didn't care you know honestly for what we do it's you know nobody i mean it's nice but nobody <laughs> was clamoring necessarily for a new record you know we we tour with or without one right much stop anyway so excuse me one second sure so it wasn't like a big deal but then we we were offered um this deal with uh, new west records some people that we knew and have known for years and it made a lot of sense on a lot of levels. You know, it seemed like it was time. But uh, when we got the deal, we, we're looking at our schedule. We we had no, um, we did not have a window. Uh, this is late 2019, looking at 2020. Like normally, when we make a record, it's like six weeks, six to 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 let's say ten weeks oh. that we'll cut out of the touring schedule and let the writers write. You know, we'll yep. we'll book you know three weeks or more, more of studio time you know that's just historically been our pattern for you know going back a number of years so we did not have that window uh without canceling shows in 2020 little did we know so the thought was um at least initially rather than try and do a studio record of originals let's just do a, a, let's let the first record be a covers record and then we'll get to a a, a proper studio record next right so that's that's where it started and then the LA idea came more or less from uh, we had the, the only record we had done in those those four or five years between deals was a Christmas record in 2019. And one of the things that we learned was, you know, if we provide a focus for ourselves and for the people like yourself, like the press and our fans, it, it makes for more of a story. And it just seemed like, you know, we had put out a number of records over the years and it's like, you know, these days it just seems like unless it's some sort of event, it's like why bother? And that's that really was kind of our attitude going into it. It's like you know what, what you know really why bother unless it's it has some sort of unique special something something right. unique what's about the, it. What's my motivation? <laughs> right, you know, especially for a band like us, it really doesn't. You know, like I said, our fans really don't they care, but they don't care that much. It's not like they're not going to come if we don't. Right, have a new right, band. right. So that's kind of where the, the L.A. concept thing came from, because I don't think, frankly, a record of us just generic, you know, covering our favorite covers would be much of a story uh, and might be proved to be really hard to negotiate. Whereas this idea was something that, you know, kept us in the lane and kept our focus where it ought to be. And uh, and it turned into a thing where, you know, we, we were able to thank or honor some people who were hugely, hugely influential in our development and in our our, yeah. you know, our, our, along our journey. So that's kind of where it started and, and went. But, you know, that said, at the beginning, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like the band was jumping up and down going, oh, that's a great idea. There was some, you know, there was anything but unanimity as far as the whole concept of it. But we just said, let's just see how far we can get. Because if we don't, if it ends up not being that, um, it wouldn't matter, like nobody would know. You know, we'll, we'll have done some of our favorite songs. Right. And, uh, you know, we could just change course and it's not that big a deal, but it uh, it, it worked out. I think, uh, you know, I think everything we hoped for happened. You know, we have a cool record. We got to thank a bunch of people. <laughs> um, I think it's a story and um, it, it makes more sense to me than than just a random, uh, you know, right. random collection of songs. Cool. Cool. Because, uh, so so the the track listing is pretty interesting obscurities from the the midnighters and barrett strong to songs that kind of everybody knows by 
like Jackson Brown and Buffalo Springfield. Right. So, so right. how did, how did those come about? Who, who chose them? Uh, well, um, I mean, everybody kind of brought their favorites. You know, I think, uh, Dave was, he was on the, the, uh, Buffalo Springfield songs. Louie, I thought, I think was the Jackson Brown song. Conrad was, uh, you know, he's our big Beach Boys fan. So that was I, his, uh, I, my, I brought the, the Percy Mayfield song. Oh, cool. And then, uh, you know, there were a couple of givens, like, you know, we knew we were going to do a blaster song. So that's where <laughs> flat top joint came. And then, uh, Lalo Guerrero, you know, we knew we were going to do a Lalo song. So that's, I think, you know, we, we, we look for one that we could kind of sink our teeth into. Yep. Uh, who am I leaving at war was another one that was sort of, oh, yeah. we knew we were going to do a war song. We just didn't know which one. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, like the, you know, the Midnighter song, oddly enough is not an obscurity to us. I mean, that was kind of a big, that song was a big deal. Certainly a big deal growing up. The false man brought her back her bag just the other day. Yeah. And those guys were huge then and they you know they always the guys always say like they thought the midnighters were like the beatles you know because they were they were all they were all on tv all the time when they were growing up you know the right. midnighters obviously were doing like the local dance shows back then but you know they turned on the tv and then you know the beatles were on set and sullivan and the midnighters were on the local dance Right, yeah, it's like you know, you know, to a nine-year-old. Well, that kind of kid. shows. I'm a I'm an East Coast guy, so like the only thing I knew was Land of a Thousand Dances, and that was about right. it, you know. So yeah, right. right, yeah. So you know, there was uh, that. That's kind of where some of those ideas from came from, and then <clears throat> certain, you know, like we we asked friends to, you know, record collectors and DJs and stuff like that. So you know, we got a lot of good ideas that then turned into songs that were closer to us, like the the last song, like Where Lovers Go, was. Right. But somebody had pitched us a, a different instrumental and Dave goes, Oh, what about that one? And then we, you know, we sort of had to track it down. And then we mm. ended up, you know, cutting it first take. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of these were actually the first or second takes, you know, like flat top joint, I think was one that was quick. Uh, you know, we didn't like generally if it didn't click quickly, we we'd move on. <laughs> move so on. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you mentioned sail on sailor. I love hearing it again. Um, Old Blondie Chaplin sang it originally. Yeah. I sailed an ocean, unsettled ocean, through restful waters and deep commotion, often frightened, unenlightened. Sail on, sail on, sail on. Uh, I see that. Um, guys performed it a couple of times with Al Jardine as well so yeah yeah that was pretty pretty awesome yeah yeah I was a that was a big deal he's a he's a total sweetheart man he was, you know none of us had ever met him before and we played in his neighborhood so he came out and we had it was amazing we did a it was one of those deals where we had a three o'clock show and an eight o'clock show so he came to the early show and was you know as gracious as could be and we're like okay man thanks that was really awesome but you know we'll see it he goes oh I'll come back <laughs> like, you know, you, you don't have to. I mean, you know, right. you kind of did, did your bit. You know, it's all good. He goes, no, nah, don't worry about it. I'll come back. And he turned up. He came back and sang it. We we did uh, shit. What else? We did Barbara Ann, I think. Too. Oh, right. Yeah. We completely screwed that up. But um, <laughs> well, how can you? Know? That's the way. I, you know, we can screw up anything, man. Believe me. <laughs> um, so anyway, it was fun. With big fun was had. Um, you know, the, the record is kind of a party record. You know, I, I mean, even though we're now dealing with, uh, you know, bouncing bounce back of the fucking virus. Um, right. You know, that we didn't know it at the time, but, you know, it is, you know, now it seems kind of somewhat celebratory. Yep. And, you know, hopefully we'll get it under control and it will remain celebratory. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of touch and go over there at the moment, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's certainly here. And every time I check in the news in the morning, it's like, now what? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah, same thing. Yeah. And um, so, so you mentioned it's kind of a party record. I, I love the, uh, the, the, the Los, Ch I can't pronounce it, but the Lalo Guerrero. Yeah. Team. I think you take Los a solo Chico. in that as well, right? Los Chico Suaves, yeah. That's it. Yes. Yeah, 
he's a, you know, he, he's another sort of seminal influence. You know, he, he's a guy that we knew, but you know, again, growing up, he was a big deal, certainly in East LA, not, not well known outside of it. Right. But he, he became a, a good friend. Um, you know, we did a children's record with him. Uh, his son was actually the MC of our Christmas. We did a Christmas special this past year and his, his son was, uh, was the MC of the whole thing. So, you know, a lot of these, like Willie G from the Midnighters, they're right. they're not just our heroes, but our fan, our, our friends, and we still you know do stuff with them as often as we can, really. Yeah, well, it's pretty cool. You got the little Willie G on the World Is a Ghetto. Yeah, um, Barrett's Whitfields. So when yeah, you, Barrett's. what were the sessions like? Did you got everybody in together? Were they kind of in and out or? How well, did you run. It was uh, it was kind of challenging, obviously, with uh, all the crap going on. So we <laughs> yeah. started in uh, we started pre pandemic. So we started in in february and did like four songs and then the world you know yep came to came to a stop there so we didn't do anything for the next four months or, or so and then june the travel restrictions loosened up enough for me to go because i don't live there and uh so i went down like i want to say like mid-june and we just sort of had to remind ourselves like i don't think the guys had opened an open open their case you know they hadn't done anything in the interim yeah. Uh, so we just sort of had to get our sea legs back under us, and then uh, basically for the rest of 2020, we more we did like a week a month more or less, you know. And we had uh, we were getting tested yeah. uh, for every session. Um, the studio was a nice big room, so we could safely distance. But everybody took the mask ordinance very seriously. You know, nobody right. broke the protocol. So. And we didn't have any any guests, which was unusual for us. Usually, it's a rolling party when we're <laughs> <in the studio. laughs> so, yeah. so it was uh, kind of amazing. Everybody really stuck to the to the to the protocol, and uh, knock on wood, we seem to have gotten through it all okay. Very good, very good. Yeah, I mean, especially as we're all getting older, you know, and it's yeah, that's it. not a good. That's not the way you want to go. <laughs> so no, it is not. No, anyway. So you mentioned that you kind of brought the Percy Mayfield tune, uh, Never No More, uh, uh, to the thing. Why, why was that? You can call me daddy on the telephone. Don't care how you beg me, I'm not coming home. Had I known then like I know right now, I would have left you long ago. You heard me one time, baby, but you never get a chance no more. Never no more. Well, he's, uh, you know, we were looking for something kind of up-tempo. We were looking for something um like kind of highlighting the central avenue right for those who don't know there was a central avenue in uh, south la was a huge hub of yeah r&b stuff in the 50s uh lowell Folsom, um you know long list of great players from that area that never really got their due it wasn't like chicago or new york or even kansas city they kind of central avenue was sort of a well-kept secret for a right. long time so um it, i thought it was important that we highlight how important that music was and um, actually reached out to a friend of mine who's a record collector of sorts and he's the one that actually recommended the song when i when i asked him like you know what do you think up tempo central avenue he's like oh you gotta you should check out this one so it was uh it was his suggestion but it was uh i remember i was on my way to the studio and i called him and i pulled over and found the song on spotify and you know Basically, by the time I got to the studio, I was like, all right, we're doing this today. <laughs> made it happen. I mean, it's such a great song. Very cool. So did, so when you did that, uh, was most of the, the band itself in the studio with you? or? Yeah, we did everything together. We, You know, the guys, I mean, I did some stuff at home, but, uh, you know, they're not really technically adept. So with Zoom recording and remote. Right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know much to my chagrin it'd be great if we could actually do more stuff remotely but they just don't they don't get it and uh yeah yeah it doesn't work for them so they're you know they're all about just let's just do it old school and you know keeps us makes them happy uh mm. it's okay it, it's it's fun you know it's uh we do it how we do it <laughs> you know our job is not to reinvent the wheel or anything like that it seems to work out somehow so <laughs> very uh, good yeah yeah now the album closes out you mentioned with a kind of a, an instrumental called Where Lovers Go, kind of a, a ballad. It reminded me of Sleepwalk, but <laughs> that's so it's a little like Sleepwalk. It's actually very, I think it's the, it might be the same chord progression.
kind of the end of the party kind of a tune where everybody's yeah. tearing off and heading out, huh? <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like, you know. I mean, we really wanted it to be a party record, you know. We wanted the kind of record you just put on at a party and forget about it. So it seemed it seems kind of appropriate how it all pulled out. Right, 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 right. So are you guys gigging now? What's what's happening with? The- yeah, uh, basically we we've done a few little you know like weekends and stuff like that unfortunately um, our guitarist fractured david fractured his hand Ooh. uh right before july 4th so his cast just came off uh, the other I... day so we kind of actually we've had to lie low a little bit because of that but it looks like uh we got through we just played some show over the weekend uh two shows right and i would say he's about 80 percent of normal roughly so you know, right. he's, it's not like 50 or less <laughs> yeah that's all so, and his um, son is, uh, is his son your drummer now these days? No, his son played on the record though. His okay. son played, played on the last two records. He, he's a fantastic drummer and uh, great, great in the studio. No, he he just does uh, our studio stuff uh, when we insist. But he's uh, he's got a better job. He plays with uh, social distortion. So oh, that's not bad. <laughs> they, they pay him more, and you know the shows are a lot more fun. And you know he gets to hang around with people his own age instead of a bunch of crutchy old dudes. So. Right, right, right. No, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember but he, you know we love having him around he's he's a great <laughs> kid but no our, our drummer actually uh our drummer for the last what eight years just moved back to mexico so we have a new drummer as of uh, about three months ago and who is he his name is fredo ortiz he was uh he was part of the beastie boys for many many years oh okay he was their percussionist and sometime drummer but uh yeah he fits right in though he's great shows right. me getting you know easier and easier like he's you know more and more songs kind of right you know, learning, uh, learning more and more of the rep- repertoire. So, you know, he's, he's in, he's in for life now. So, uh, but <laughs> yeah, to answer your question, we start, <clears throat> effectively start on, uh, on Sunday, we are doing a show in LA with X and the blasters. There you go. Can I come? But, yeah, <laughs> come on, get on a plane, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Should, should be a, should be a big night. Oh, and man. then, uh, and then that effectively is the starting line. And then we're, you know, we're not, I mean, it's, when I say this, it's not every, every, you know, all month, every month, but we're basically booked for a year. Right. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. yeah. So now, I have one not, non uh, Los Lobos question for you, because I know you do lots of other stuff. And I saw that you had played uh, at the Joni Mitchell 75th kind of yeah concert, memorial, whatever it was. I was just wondering what that was like. <laughs> uh, it was amazing, actually. Uh, it was, you know, I mean, I, I think she's one of the true treasures of music, so it was great, uh, yeah. great to be part of it. But the guy that put it on is a good friend of mine, Danny Capillion is his name. And, you know, we, uh-huh. we've, we've talked about doing, like, we've done a few things with him over the years. I shouldn't say we haven't done much, but we, he does stuff all the time and not a lot of it, you know, we're, you know most of it's on the West Coast, or the East Coast. Um, so, you know, we're not foremost in his thoughts, but this one being right. in LA uh, was kind of a no-brainer and we were able to do it with, um, uh, the, a woman named uh, La Marisol, who sings in a band called uh, La Santa Cecilia, who are basically the the next Lobos. <laughs> <More or less. laughs> they're, like, uh, right. they're, a, they're a great band. Uh, she's done a lot of stuff with Elvis Costello. I mean, oh. she's sort of getting her name is getting out there. People, you know, starting to see what an amazing talent she is, Ooh. and she she really crushed it. I mean, she she brought the house down in a room where you know uh, Brandy Carlisle and uh, Rufus Wainwright. I mean, there's some you know it's like I don't know, like playing horse with Michael Jackson or uh, Michael Jordan, <laughs> and you know she she kind of pulled it off. It was it was really something, but it was great to be there. Like everybody, you know, Brandy Carlisle. I'd never seen her live before. It was unbelievable. Yeah, Rufus Gart, uh, you know, Rufus Wainwright. Never seen him before live. You know, he yeah. was great. Yeah, and it just you know, then getting to meet Joni and you know just being there and being part of it. And, you know, all these great songs. Every you know every song was fucking amazing. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was a big night. It was really a big big fun night, and uh, honored to be part of it. Um, cool. And I, the fact that it was my buddy Danny, who is one of my closest friends, that, that made it even better. So all good. Sure. And she seems to be doing better, and possibly. Oh God, I hope so. You know, she's she's got a lot of stuff. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. there's, there's like this and that, and some other thing, and. And she has not stopped smoking either at 70 whatever so you know like <laughs> well that's not going to help but the, there you the go Dorothy, <laughs> the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion like one of the like literally the, the 
the Carnegie Hall of Los Angeles. She's in there smoking. We're like, oh, I hope she doesn't get thrown out. This will not be <laughs> this will not be a good luck, but because she's Joni Mitchell, they let her smoke. So well, there you go. All righty. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking to me. And you know, come on down Wait. here when you if you get a chance. Oh man, I would love, I was so you know, I talked to Mitchell just before with Mitchell Froome that yep. we talked early about it, and I, I talked to him just before he left and I was like, you know, that was like the you know back then that was the only place in the world you, where you could go see and play pretty much and i was just man i'm so jealous that's so awesome that you get to go play yep yep i mean uh, i saw the crowded house show that mitchell played on and it, just down the street here and there were like twelve thousand people in the room with me you know and it's like uh, the rest of the country or the world is just like shut down yeah, no we, there was no, no we reveling in it <laughs> yeah. but now it's you're you're dealing with your own version of it right i mean it's well no, we're nothing. The only thing that we're struggling with is getting everybody vaccinated. So, because everybody feels like, um, well, we don't have anything to worry about. So, why should we bother? Uh, I just got my vaccination like last week. So, uh, so uh, the problem is that there's a, uh, a two week uh, thing you have to quarantine, you have to sit through if you come into the country. So, that's keeping right. international artists out for the most part. And they tried to open up a bubble with Australia and Australia has been having trouble. So they had to close the bubble. So oh, shows yeah. getting canceled, but the local scene is great here. So we're going out. We just had a big flying nun 40th anniversary show last weekend. And we had, the, the label, right? the label and the, you know, the right. bats are playing and straight jacket fits and all those folks. So it was, it's fantastic. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, so anyway, continued, uh, continued success, continued health. I hope, uh, I hope you're at, you're able to eradicate it. And, uh, <laughs> well, I yeah, I hope that. I really hope we get back. It's been way too long. It's been I don't know what eight or nine years since we've been. So oh really? Okay, yeah, yeah definitely. Come on down. It's really been too long. I I personally I love. I mean I've never been in New Zealand, but I just love you know that part of the world. I love Australia. Yeah, uh, nothing but great times there. So cool. I hope to come back. All righty. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. My pleasure, man. Thank you. My pleasure.